हेलो एवरी वन लेट एस सॉल्व फ्यू मोर प्रॉब्लम्स ऑन कैंडल योर बीम बाय कॉन्जुगेट बीम मेथड लेट एस कंसिडर कैंटिल यूर सब्जेक्टेड टू टू कॉन्सेंट्रेटेड लोड्स दिस इज द सेम प्रॉब्लम वॉट वी सॉल्व इन मोमेंट एरिया मेथड This is one point five meters. This is two meters. This is two i and one point five i. Point A, B, C. Okay. So a cantilever beam subjected to two concentrated loads. Okay. So here the moment of inertia it is changing from A to B. and b to c from a to b it is 2i and from b to c it is 1.5i okay the same problem can be given like this also okay variation in moment of inertia this is 2i this is 1.5i this is point a here point b the load 10 kN point c this load 20 kN okay it is one or other same okay so here let us find uh, what is slope at point c and at point b and deflection at point c and at point b okay so first you need to draw the elastic curve so if you consider the same problem it may have the deflection something like this so this is point a point b point c so if i draw the points on elastic curve here they are the points so the tangent at b the tangent at c this is required this is required this is theta c this is theta b similarly deflection at point b deflection at point c correct so you need not to worry about this elastic curve so in all the problems so if you are okay with it directly so we can solve it by conjugate beam method okay so in conjugate beam method first we need to assume the real beam okay so the real beam is one the original beam that is the given problem okay this or this both are same the given problem is real beam or original beam so now next i need to draw the bending moment diagram that is m by ei diagram okay so if i draw the moment diagram here i am drawing m by ei diagram okay so what is m by ei diagram for this so it is a cantilever beam subjected to two concentrated load okay so at the free end moment at c it is zero correct there is no perpendicular distance as we go from free end to the fixed end moment goes on increases and the moment is existed from point c towards a correct so at point b what is the moment so cut a section right words 20 into 2 20 into 2 it is 40 kN meter what is the moment at a now you are cutting a section here the right hand side there are two concentrated loads so one is 10 due to 10 what is the moment at a 10 into 1.5 Plus two to twenty, twenty into total perpendicular distance is three point five. Correct. So before this, how much you are getting this? It is ten into one point five plus twenty into three point five. Eighty-five. So you are getting this as eighty 
पाई किलो न्यूटन मीटर सो साइन कन्वेंशन कट सेक्शन फ्रॉम राइट वर्ड्स इफ इट इज एंटी क्लॉक वॉज पॉजिटिव करेक्ट सो बट हियर दीज मोमेंट्स आर मेकिंग एंटी क्लॉक वॉज ड्यू टू ट्वेंटी इट इज रोटेटिंग क्लॉक वॉज एंड ड्यू टू टेन इट इज क्लॉक वॉज ओके सो इफ एट अ सेक्शन द राइट हैंड साइड इफ इट इज एंटी क्लॉक वॉज देन इट इज पॉजिटिव सो दीज मोमेंट्स आर मेकिंग क्लॉक वॉज सॉरी इट इज क्लॉक वॉज ट्वेंटी इट इज मेकिंग क्लॉक वॉज टेन इट इज मेकिंग क्लॉक वॉज बट इफ इट इज एंटी क्लॉक वॉज देन इट इज पॉजिटिव सिंस दे आर क्लॉक वॉज सो दिस इज नेगेटिव दैट इज माइनस फोर्टी दिस इज नेगेटिव करेक्ट सो नो इफ आर ड्रॉ द बेनिंग डायग्राम मोमेंट एट सी इज जीरो सो मोमेंट एट बी सो दिस इज एट पॉइंट बी सो दिस इज फोर्टी नेगेटिव देन फ्रॉम पॉइंट बी टू पॉइंट ए ओके सो दिस डायग्राम दिस इज एटी फाइव करेक्ट सो वी वॉन्ट एम बाय ई आई डायग्राम ओके सो दिस इज एम बाय ई आई डायग्राम सो हियर इन दिस एम बाई ई आई डायग्राम सो आई नीड टू डिवाइड दिस विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू ई आई सो इन दिस प्रॉब्लम ई आई इज चेंजिंग फ्रॉम पॉइंट ए टू बी इट इज टू आई फ्रॉम पॉइंट बी टू सी इट इज वन पॉइंट फाइव सो इफ आई कंसिडर द पॉइंट्स ऑन दिस एम बाई ई आई डायग्राम फ्रॉम पॉइंट सी टू पॉइंट बी इट इज वन पॉइंट फाइव सो एक्जैक्टली एट पॉइंट बी इट इज चेंजिंग इट इज टू आई दिस साइड वन पॉइंट फाइव दिस साइड सो राइट हैंड साइड वन पॉइंट फाइव आई लेफ्ट हैंड साइड टू आई सो द वैल्यू ऑफ एट बी इज फोर्टी इफ आई कंसिडर राइट हैंड साइड सो आई नीड टू कंसिडर इट एज फोर्टी बाय वन पॉइंट फाइव ई आई करेक्ट एक्जैक्टली फ्रॉम पॉइंट बी टूवर्ड्स लेफ्ट साइड इट इज टू आई ओके सो इफ आई कंसिडरिंग दिस साइड द लेफ्ट हैंड साइड इट शुड बी फोर्टी डिवाइड बाय टू ई आई करेक्ट सो नाउ आई नीड टू हैव स्टैंडर्ड फिगर्स such that i can calculate the areas with respect to those standard figures okay so now i need to split into standard figures let us split into a rectangle and one triangle okay so exactly this rectangle is of height 40 by 2 yeah here the same thing will be this side that is 40 by 2 yeah because from a to b it is moment of inertia 2i okay then how about this from here to here the total is 85 by 2 ei at point a the moment of inertia is 2i okay so total is 85 by 2 ei from here to here it is 40 by 2i so remaining is how much so 85 minus 40 so you are left out with 45 divided by 2 ei correct so i got to know what all the standard figures and heights and bases so this is 1.5 meters this is 2 meters so this is m by e r diagram this is real beam the step 1 so you need to assume the given problem as the real beam that is original beam where we need to find the slope and deflection then you need to draw the m by e r diagram that is bending moment diagram then next the next diagram is the conjugate beam so what is conjugate beam so where the fixed end is there there free end where the free end is there there it is fixed end correct so here it will be free here it will be fixed end this is point a this is point b okay so now what will be the loading on this conjugate beam the m by e r diagram of original beam or real beam is the loading on the conjugate beam okay so there are two nodes if the m by e r diagram of the real beam is negative then i need to consider upwards on the conjugate beam if the m by e r diagram of the real beam is positive then i need to consider it is downwards on the conjugate beam so here this diagram is negative so if it is negative i need to consider it as upwards okay let me draw that again 
at point B and at point A okay so this problem we have solved in uh, moment area method so that time we have discussed it so this is not a straight line okay so from C to up to here it is not a straight line the variation of bending moment diagram it is not a straight line okay from point C to point B it is a straight line again from point B to point A it is a straight line but from here to here it is not a straight line so usually students will do the mistake here okay so let me so this is point C right point A B C okay so the heights it is 40 by 1.5 EI so this is this side 40 by 2 EI so this is 40 by 2 EI 45 by 2 EI correct okay conjugate beam since it is negative diagram we need to consider it is acting upwards on the conjugate beam okay so now according to conjugate beam theorem 1 so what it says the slope at any point so here we are finding at b and c let us find at b first slope at b in real beam is equal to what shear force at b in conjugate beam correct slope at b in real beam is equal to shear force at b in conjugate beam that is theta b so what is the shear force at b in conjugate beam so what is the shear force the shear force is nothing but total vertical upward or downward load correct so here you are finding at point b so there is right hand side there is left hand side either you need to consider right hand side to calculate shear force total vertical force either upwards or downwards or left hand side that is vertical force upwards or downwards correct so which one is better to calculate so either leftwards or rightwards obviously it is leftwards why so if i consider rightwards of point b then there is a reaction over here correct so that is rc okay you would need not to find this rc okay not to find so why again if you want to find this you need to use equilibrium condition again you need to make use of these diagrams okay so it is double work you need not to worry about this consider left hand side however you are getting what is the shear force so shear force cut a section left hand side if it is upwards right hand side if it is downwards then it is positive so however we will be considering left hand side if it is upward positive this is upwards correct so at point b the total vertical force left hand side so which are the figures one rectangle and one triangle so so here load is nothing but load is equal to area so the total load is assumed to act at the cz so when you find the shear force it is just load is equal to area of that figure so what is the area of this figure between a and b so you are calculating slope at b so total shear force the left hand side this figure and this figure area of this this is 1.5 this is 2 so area of that rectangle is 1.5 into 40 by 2 ei plus area of this triangle is half base is 1.5 and height is 45 by 2 ei okay so simplify this so you will be getting it is 46.87 by ei so you will be getting 46.87 by ei the unit is radians 
correct so the next one more that is theta c so again if i apply the conjugate beam theorem one so slope at c now in real beam is equal to shear force at c in conjugate beam correct slope at c in real beam is equal to shear force at c in conjugate beam so you are finding theta c now so what is the shear force at point c so leftward if you consider the entire three figures now you need to consider this plus this plus this rightwards the reaction so always we will be going ahead with left hand side okay if it is leftward upwards so the areas the area of this first figure again 1.5 into 40 by 2i plus area of this triangle half into base is 1.5 into height is 45 by 2ei plus area of this triangle half into base is 2 into height is 40 by 1.5ei okay so three figures so if you simplify this okay so already the area of this figure this figure it is 46.25 then the area of this figure will be okay you are getting 73.55 by ei it is 73.55 by ei theta c you are getting 73.55 so now if you check the theta b it is 46.87 by ei then theta c it is 73.55 by ei okay so which one is a uh, higher one so the obviously it is theta c so the slope will be always maximum at point c okay as we go near to the support at exactly at fixed end it will be zero correct it is maximum at c and it goes on reducing and it will become zero at fixed end correct so this is the calculation of slope so now if i calculate the deflection okay so let me consider like this so we'll calculate first the deflection at point b okay so now we'll calculate the deflection deflection at b so according to conjugate beam theorem 2 so what it says the deflection at b in a real beam is equal to deflection is equal to bending moment at b in conjugate beam so deflection at b in real beam is equal to bending moment at b in conjugate beam so you are finding delta b so what is the bending moment at b in conjugate beam so what it is so exactly at point b so always consider left hand portion so sign convention cut a section left hand if it is clockwise then it is positive so the you are taking moment at b so this figure into perpendicular distance this figure into perpendicular distance so the load is assumed to acting at the cz of this rectangle so here it will be acting at the cz of this triangle so from here to here from here to here okay so the distances delta b so the area of first figure that is rectangle it is 1.5 the base into height it is 40 by 2 ei into perpendicular distance from here to here you are taking the bending moment at b okay so what is this so c will be exactly at the center 1.5 divided by 2 okay plus the area of this figure into perpendicular distance 
what is the area half into base is 1.5 into height is 45 by 2 er into this distance what is this distance this is zero position for this triangle and this is maximum from zero it is two third of 1.5 correct so again simplify this so if you simplify this so you will be getting as 39.37 by ei so the deflection in meters this is delta b okay so this is delta b similarly if we calculate the deflection at c deflection at c so what is the deflection at c then again according to conjugate beam theorem sorry 3 uh, sorry 2 the deflection at c in real beam is equal to bending moment at c in conjugate beam so now total three figures between a and c you need to take moment due to all the three figures about point c so you are taking section here left hand side from here the moment force into perpendicular distance so cz will be here from here to here entire thing it is required for this cz here to here entire thing for this cz from here to here okay so let us write one by one so the first triangle sorry this okay so you are cutting delta c we'll consider this triangle area is half into base is 2 meters into height is 45 40 by 1.5 ei this is area it is assumed to acting at the cz from cz the perpendicular distance how much is that from zero position it is two third of base base is two meters correct plus then we'll consider this rectangle area is 40 by 2 ei into base 1.5 into perpendicular distance from here up to point c you are taking moment at c okay how much is this from here to here it is 1.5 divided by 2 from here to here it is 2 so 1.5 divided by 2 plus 2 correct plus then area of this triangle half into base is 1.5 into height is 45 by 2 ei okay into perpendicular distance from here to here from here to here it is 2 meters from here to here it is again 2 third of 1.5 plus 2 all the three figures okay so cut the section left hand side clockwise positive okay so you are taking moment here left hand side all are making clockwise moments so if you simplify this so you will be getting 168.68 by ei meters this is delta c okay so this is how you are going to solve a problem with respect to conjugate beam method step one real beam the given beam where we need to find the slope and deflection then the m by ER diagram then the conjugate beam where fixed end free end free end fixed end then the loading on conjugate beam is the m by ER diagram of the real beam since it is negative we have considered acting upwards then slope at any point in real beam is equal to shear force at that point in conjugate beam okay shear force is nothing but total vertical force left hand side or right hand side usually here we will be considering the left hand portion so at b so these two figures at c these three figures okay then deflection according to conjugate beam theorem 2 so deflection at any point in real beam is equal to bending moment at that point in conjugate beam okay so force into perpendicular distance if you are finding at b so this figure 
perpendicular distance this figure perpendicular distance if you are finding at c so this figure perpendicular distance this figure perpendicular distance for this figure from here to here okay so let us solve one more problem on conjugate beam itself okay a uh, cantilever beam subjected to udl not entire span so maybe up to 2 meters okay let us this point be b a this point b this point is c the intensity of loading is 20 kN meter okay this is 1.5 meters okay again uh, we we will consider the moment of inertia is changing from a to b let us consider it as 2i from b to c let us we will consider it as i okay so here let us consider um, the angst modulus as 210 gpa and uh, moment of inertia 120 into 10 raised to 6 mm4 we'll find what is the slope at b and what is the deflection at c okay only this two okay so you can find what is the slope at c also you can find what is the deflection at b also so let us find this two okay so this is the real beam the given problem is real beam so once we have assumed the original beam as real beam then next step we need to draw the bending moment diagrams okay that is m by e r diagram m by e i diagram okay exactly moment at point c is zero so from here to here it goes on increases so the variation of b to c the bending moment is parabolic so it is not a linear variation so exactly at point b it is something like this not a straight line from b to a there is no load but moment is there it is straight line okay from here to here it is something parabolic from b to a it is a straight line since there is no load okay so what all these values this is point a point b point c moment at c is zero moment at b so here it is 20 into 2 20 into 2 total load acting at the center from here to here distance that is 2 by 2 okay so you'll be getting 22 is a 40 kN meter so similarly the moment at a it is 20 into 2 20 into 2 total load acting at the center so again you are taking moment at a from here to here here to here it is 1.5 from here to here it is 1 meters so it is total 2.5 so 40 40 80 100 okay so you will be getting 100 kN meter correct so m by e r diagram this is real beam so now we need to have this uh, ei a to b it is 2i so it is 100 by 2ei c to b it is i 40 by ei exactly at point b this that left hand side it is 2i the right hand side it is i so the right hand side it is 40 by i so here left hand side it is 40 by 2ei this side will be 40 by 2ei exactly at point b the moment of inertia is changing the left hand side right hand side okay now split into standard figures so this is rectangle of height 40 by 2ei total is 100 by 2ei from here to here if this is 40 by 2ei from here to here it is 60 by 2ei correct 
so 40 by 2 ei from here to here it is 60 by 2 ei okay so now once you draw this m by a diagram now we need to draw the conjugate beam what is conjugate beam where the fixed end is there they are free where free end is there they are fixed correct so now this is conjugate beam. so then what will be the loading on conjugate beam the m by e i diagram of original beam that is real beam is the loading on the conjugate beam okay so this diagram is negative so all the values are negative because cut a section right hand side if it is anti-clockwise positive mm -hmm. but you are taking movement here right hand side this movement is clockwise so cantilever beam subjected to any type of loading usually negative okay so now so since it is negative we need to consider it is acting upwards on the conjugate beam it is total from here to here it is straight line it is parabolic split into standard so this side it is 40 by ei so this is 40 by 2 ei 40 by 2 ei so from here to here it is 60 by 2 ei correct so once you have drawn conjugate beam so we need to consider this acting upwards on the conjugate beam correct since it is negative acting upwards so now you are finding theta b so what is theta b that is according to conjugate beam theorem one slope at any point in real beam slope at b in real beam is equal to the shear force at b in conjugate beam correct so that is theta p is equal to at theta b so means you are cutting a section here so left hand side or right hand side total vertical force it's better always consider left hand side so we can skip this rc need not to find okay left hand if you consider the areas one rectangle is there one triangle is there what is the area of this rectangle that is base is 1.5 1.5 into height is 40 by 2 ei plus area of this triangle half base is 1.5 height is 60 by 2 ei two figures total vertical force that is shear force okay total vertical force so how much you will be getting so if you simplify this so you will be getting around 52.5 by ei radians 52.5 by ei radians okay this is the slope at point b similarly here they have not asked if you want to find the slope at point c so if you find the slope at point c then you need to add this figure also the total vertical force between from point a to point c the total left hand side vertical force so this area plus this area plus this area so this area plus this area is 52.5 so again if you find this area add to this so theta c you will be getting around 79.166 by ei yeah, radians so do this you can get this okay so slope at c in real beam is equal to shear force at c in conjugate beam okay what is the shear force at c total leftwards vertical force this area plus this area plus this area you will be getting 79.166 166 by ei okay then so we'll find the delta c the deflection at point c that is maximum deflection at the free end in cantilever beam so according to that conjugate beam theorem 2 what it says the deflection 
at any point so here we'll be finding at point deflection at c in real beam is equal to bending moment at c in conjugate beam okay deflection at c in real beam is equal to bending moment at c in conjugate beam so what is the deflection at c that is delta c is equal to okay bending moment at c in conjugate beam so between a and c how many figures total three figures so i need to take moment about point c bending moment at c in conjugate beam so this cz into distance cz into distance this cz into distance okay so let us write one by one so if i consider this figure so parabolic triangle what is the area of that one third of base base is two meters total is two meters this is two meters one third of two into height is 40 by ei into perpendicular distance from here to here so what is that from maximum it is one fourth of l from minimum it is three fourth of l l is two three fourth of base plus next this rectangle area what is the area of this base is 1.5 into height is 40 by 2 ei correct into perpendicular distance from here to here total from here to here it is 2 meters from here to here it will be 1.5 divided by 2 for rectangle correct so 1.5 divided by 2 plus 2 plus so one more is area of this triangle half into base is 1.5 into height is 60 by 2 ei and perpendicular distance from here to here from here to here it is 2 meters from here to here it is from zero position for this rectangle two third of base two third of 1.5 plus 2 okay so if you simplify this so you will be getting 190 by ei meters okay so similarly so if i find delta b so what is that the deflection at point b okay deflection at point b in real beam is equal to bending moment at point b in conjugate beam so i need to consider only these two figures total area into perpendicular distance so 1.5 divided by 2 so this area into distance that is two third of 1.5 so do that so you will be getting so 150 by ei meters okay so now you can check it so the maximum deflection at the free end delta c then at b so again exactly at point a it is zero correct fixed end okay so here we forgot to consider this ei so they have given the angst modulus and moment of inertia okay so angst modulus e they have given it as 210 gpa then i it has 120 into 10 raised to 6 mm raised to 4 okay so we have discussed this about this so always standard unit of e should be in kilo newton per meter square i should be in meter raised to 4 such that the product e i should be in kilo newton meter square correct this is standard this is standard okay so now let us convert this so e they have given it as 210 giga pascal so i hope uh, you are aware about this one okay kilo means 
10 days to 3 correct so if i calculate the 1 kilo newton is equal to 10 days to 3 newton kilo 10 days to 3 mega newton next so mega means 10 days to 6 then giga giga newton it is 10 days to 9 correct so you know what is pascal 1 pascal is nothing about 1 newton per meter square or else 1 pascal is equal to 10 raise to minus 6 newton per millimeter square okay then 1 mpa that is mega pascal is equal to 1 newton per mm square then again 1 giga pascal is equal to it is 10 raised to 3 newton per mm square correct these are the some relationship you should be knowing so kilo 10 raised to 3 mega 10 raised to 6 giga 10 raised to 9 okay so here they have given the Young's modulus it has 210 GPA so means 210 into 10 raise to 9 Pascal nothing but 210 into 10 raise to 9 Newton per meter square if I convert this Newton to kilonewton I need to divide by 10 raise to 3 correct so it will be 210 into 10 raise to 6 kilo newton per meter square okay similarly here it is mm raised to 4 convert that into meter raised to 4 so lower to higher when you are doing divide so 1 meter is equal to 1000 mm so it is raised to 4 so if you simplify this 4 3 is at 12 so this is 10 to 6 so 120 into here 12 is there we are left out with 10 raise to minus 6 so if you this is meter raise to 4 both ei if you calculate so it will be 210 into 10 raise to 6 kilo newton meter square into 110 into 10 raise to minus 6 meter raise to 4 okay it will be 10 to 2 plus 6 10 to 2 minus 6 gone so 210 into 120 so it will be 210 into 120 so it is 25200 kilo newton meter square so this is the answer okay so ei is 25210 or else 2.52 into 10 raise to 4 kilo newton meter square okay so we have calculated so these slopes so if you substitute the values of ei in this okay so you will be getting theta b after substitution of ei 52.5 divided by 25.22 so it is 2.08 2.08 into 10 raise to minus 3 radians ok similarly theta c so 79.166 divided by 25200 you will be getting 3.14 into 10 raise to minus 3 radians ok then delta c that is 190 divided by 25200 7.53 into 10 raise to minus 3 meters okay then delta b okay 
वन फिफ्टी डिवाइड बाई टू फाइव टू डबल जीरो फाइव पॉइंट नाइन फाइव टू इंटू टेन डिस्ट टू माइनस थ्री मीटर्स ओके सो दिस आर द फाइनल आंसर्स आफ्टर सब्सिट्यूशन ऑफ दिस ई आई वैल्यूज ओके सो इन दिस क्लास वी हैव सॉल्व two problems on uh, cantilever beam okay with udl and uh, this one problem that is two concentrated loads okay go through these problems again so if you are having any difficulty so you can contact me okay let us stop it here and uh, we'll solve a uh, uh, few more problems on uh, simply supported beams by conjugate beam method okay so with respect to the cantilever beam problems so these are sufficient so ultimately depends on the bending moment diagram only the loads will be changing so if the same thing you need to adopt if suppose in a cantilever beam there are two different types of loadings are there so how we have done in moment theorem method okay so we have drawn the bending moment diagram separately okay the same thing you need to do it okay you need to draw the bending moment diagram sub suppose a cantilever beam subjected to two types of loadings okay so one is udl of some intensity and moment of some intensity okay this can be solved as considering only udl separately plus this moment separately due to this the bending moment diagram plus due to this the bending moment diagram okay so ultimately the total uh, effect of this particular forces on the beam must be equal to individual effect okay like principle of superposition like you need to solve it okay already we have solved such type of problems in case of moment theorem method the same problems you can consider and you can solve it okay absolutely there is no change in drawing the bending moment diagrams you need to consider two types of loads independently separately is that okay yes just one uh, small correction so here this problem so i said uh, to solve uh, for delta b so this area into perpendicular distance about this this area into perpendicular distance correct up to this okay if you solve this delta b you will be getting as 45 by ei not 150 by ei you will be getting it as 45 by ei so it is 45 by ei okay so even when you substitute the value of ei so you will be getting it is around 7 point in just a minute let me check 45 divided by 25 Two double zero. You will be getting one point seven eight five into ten raised to minus three. Okay, please uh, note it. This is the correction. Okay, so let us stop it here. I will solve few more problems in next class. Thank you.